Lynn, and welcome to another day at Utopia Farms. Really weird thing happened last night when I got to the house. Two things, actually. Surprises, I guess. Um, I went in, I guess, when I finished the video, and I was complaining that I had to make dinner again because I really wasn't in the mood yesterday. And... I got the dinner prepared and then I got the dog's food ready and I opened the front door to let the dogs in to come and eat. And when I opened the front door, I had a couple of packages on the door. One of them was our neighbor dropped by again and dropped off some more food, <laughs> meals. The one who gave us the meals last time. Um, she said, here's a meal for tonight. And I thought, oh, if I'd only opened it like 30 minutes earlier. But that was a, a really nice surprise, so we'll be having that tonight. <laughs> um, the other thing was this. I had a package from Amazon with some gloves for lambing. And I definitely didn't order any gloves from Amazon because we get our gloves from our vet. So, and there was no, like note from where it came from or anything so I have no idea who sent these or or anything um yeah it was it's a total surprise so yeah if anyone knows who the mystery glove sender is I'd love to know I opened the milk house door after I was making the bottles here and found my two friends waiting at the door for me. You guys, you're escape artists. I guess we can feed you in here. In privacy. Okay, they came over here for some milk. But the bigger one is actually not even really drinking. I just came here for the fun of it, obviously. They mess with you. <laughs> Come on back this way, buddy. Gotta do it the manual way. Hi, you guys. You, you don't look like you need a bottle. This one's finished, you guys. finished too. Hi, how you doing? Hi, you're the new one in the group. How you doing over here? Hi, hello. You look nice. You guys all look nice. And how you doing? Hi. This group is at it again. Looney, how come you're not at it with the others? You gotta join them. You're only a little different. There you go. Hi, Lenny. Hi. Run, Looney. When I look in the lambing barn, this is all that's left in this group right now, not too many. So you can see some here still have big udders. They're the ones that are going to come in imminently. 
This one, two over uh. here. Yeah, there. This one here lost a lamb. That's why she has a mark on her, and you can see her udders drying, starting to dry up now. But there's others in here who have still some udder development, but the udders are still kind of small, so they're much farther off. So what we're expecting is that the rest of, of the big uttered ones are going to go in the next little while and we're expecting a bit of a break maybe till the next cycle as the other ewes come on board because we left the rams in like right till january so it's possible that some even went as far as may but um i'm guessing most of them are bred but we had a we had a group of ewes last year that lambed in May and they got put in late and I'm guessing those girls are going to go again late because obviously they didn't have much of a break between lambings and the breeding group. So I'm guessing that the bulk of these guys are going to be done shortly. And someone asked me how you tell like when the ewes not showing sign of an udder if she's pregnant, like this girl here. I don't see any sign of an udder. I see that she's got a round belly, but if she doesn't have an udder, she's not likely to be getting a, much of a belly yet. So um, there is no way to tell unless you uh, do an ultrasound. And actually when she turned around, I did see a little udder there. So she could just be someone who has a small udder and, and yeah, she's a first timer. First timers will have smaller udders. Hi, you're a first timer. Heather, Heather, you haven't lambed yet, sweetheart. Let me check your udder, okay? I'm gonna go rock behind you and see. Yeah, see, I see a, an udder on Heather, but sh I also see that she's a little farther behind and she had, triplets last year so again she probably took a little longer to recover from the lambing and is just late sometimes they actually even absorb a lamb if they breed like really early on and can rebreed a few months later so you never know but the only way to absolutely know if your sheep are pregnant is to get them scanned Otherwise, you have to just wait and watch for the signs of udders developing. Some of my really pretty girls are the ones that are slower here, like this one. To me, that's a really gorgeous Suffolk U. Hi, you're a Suffolk grade, but you're still beautiful, yes. And this one here, also a very, very beautiful Suffolk. Hi. You just having a rest there? And like I say, a few of them in here are ones that lost lambs, like she lost her lamb. She had um, a lamb born, but it died. And this you, same thing. She lost her lamb. It's okay. It's okay, guys. It was just Ben. And the other one with the mark on her back also lost a lamb. They all had live lambs, but something happened. I right now don't even remember, but they, most of them, I know this uh, girl here, she sat on her lambs. And this one, I don't know. No stillborn lambs this year. Um, they've all seemed to have been born live. Uh, from what I can remember, most of our lamb losses have been due to accidents. Use um, sitting on their lambs. 
which is a really terrible thing. Like, we have had the odd uh, little one that was born too small, and they've passed away. But we've had quite a few really nice ones born and got sat on from over-loving mothers. So th those are the really sad ones. When a little sickly one dies, you don't mind so much. You realize that that's just part of nature. This is how the creep area looks today. We got a whole bunch of lambs in on this side here, eating hay on the adult trough, but it's now got no adults in it because of this wall here. The adults are all up that way, so they can eat without getting harassed by the adults. And these guys in the little troughs are eating the actual creep feed. This ewe has figured out, there's a few of the smaller ewes who have figured out they can get in to the creep area through these bars. And for us, any ewe that can get into the creep area is a ewe that we're probably not going to be keeping because they're just uh, not making the size grade. Go on. Likewise, that's how we choose our keeper lambs a lot of times because they're the first ones that can't get into the creep area, which is what we do want. So I think this morning there were three Dorset ewes that had gotten into this creep area. Uh, of course, none of the Suffolk's can get in the creep area. On this side we have the Suffolk lambs. Whole bunch eating hay here. Not so many eating grain. Oh, because Arnie hasn't put fresh grain out, that's why. They want it fresh, so he's, he's got to make a fresh batch of creep feed this afternoon, and then I think it'll be a different picture. Everybody will be in here eating grain. Oh, and there's uh, Lazarus right here, the one that itching his tail there. He's lost a bit of condition since he lost his mom, but he's fine. You can see he's definitely not poor, but he's not fat like some of uh, the other ones. I've tried him on a bottle a few times. One time he really took a bottle, and after that he never took another one, so... I figure he knows what he wants. And then I got some spoiled bottle babies here who are the opposite. They really don't need any more bottles because they're quite chunky. do during chores. This is where the rowdy crew are. Hi buddies. Hi. You're a lamb on a box. There's a ram in here. I don't, of course he's laying down now probably. Who is a definite show style ram. Not a practical ram, but if you want to show and win the shows, he's a show style. Ben, get out. Get out. Get out. And this is where all the lambs are. We got a few running around here, but the majority go in their lamb clusters under the feeders. calling for their lamb. Hi. 
you're very little. Hi. How you doing in here? Hi. You're a youngster. You must have been on the last shipment. Yeah. Hi there. How you doing? I don't think it's him. It's a really black ram. You're very pretty too, but you're not the show one. I think it's this guy over here. Hey buddies, how you doing under here? Let me see, we got that little one there, but that big black guy over here, I think this may be him. Hi. Hi. Is it okay if I disturb you and get you out of here so we can look at you? Because you're very different. There you go. Come on, buddy. Look at this guy. Got a really good stand on him. Really smooth from the front to the back, meaning same width and stuff. He's going to be a very big ram, like tall. I'm guessing he's from Jethro, because Jethro's are a really tall ram. Come on, buddy, let's see ya. Let's see, he's got a super deep chest at the front there. He's really, really long. The guys who want to go to 4-H and stuff, or win shows, this is the style of ram that's a show ram. Have you seen this big Jethro ram? I assume it's Jethro. Because you, like, look at the, all the ones around them that are the same age. Hi, buddy. Look at him next to the other one. <laughs> Same age. The other one's probably a triplet, but nevertheless. I'm hoping he doesn't get too big because I find his father is a little too tall. That's what I mean. He this this ram would be for a specific person, someone who wants to go to the shows and and place well. Little sheep don't place well. Good girl. I'm having a hard time dealing with it. Good girl. But he he's right up at the trough already, and that's well, a tall trough. Look at the consistency of them. Yeah, they're in, well. We know they're nice. But, uh, I'm always amazed by this ram when I come in here. Well, you would you would swear that that ram was not four days old, but like yeah. several months yeah. old. <laughs> Right now, uh, Arnie's fixing one of his gates because uh, the outside was starting to pull off, so he's just reattaching it all so no one gets caught. Is that it? Well, what I'll do is you burn something off. I'm going to cut that off and make two, two six foot gates. This one's too long for us to carry. It's just way too heavy. Okay, if you're 16 years old or 20 years old. Okay, so this is the same routine as we do every day. It's always releasing a sheep from the jug. Come on. That's her dewormer. This ewe has a single lamb, but she adopted a lamb. She adopted that spotty one. They seem to be doing okay. Arnie!
Not on camera. <laughs> Arnie has a little gas. <laughs> She said you had her at a bad angle. Her hoofs don't even look that long. So the whole point is to get that blade underneath the hoof, which will curl over. And once it's underneath, you just clip it off. Come on, Mom. Come on. Okay, turn around now, Mom. Turn around now. Your lambs are the other way. There we go. Right, these guys are going to go in the family group now. And so while we're trimming hooves, we got a bunch of escapees from the misfit group having a mad half hour over here. The misfits have all figured out how to get out of their pen, so they just have free range in the barn. They're the happy group. Here's the next two up. This one's a little wilder, so we have to be careful she doesn't run over everyone. And, and, and of course, the first thing she did do was run over her lamb. This is why this mom's doing so well, because she's very spunky, and the lambs are very spunky too. Mom! Yeah, she's kind of uh, ridiculous. When, well, I think we're going to call that a day. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you'll join us again tomorrow for the next episode at Utopia Farms. Bye for now.